The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty, eternal God, increase in us your gifts of faith, hope, and love. And in order that love may abide in us, help us to celebrate what your love has done for us. Grant this, we pray, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Zion. The first reading is from the book of Joshua. Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and some of the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to the people, Now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your fathers served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. And if it is evil in your eyes to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your fathers served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our fathers up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the way that we went and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord for he is our God. Please join in responsibly reading Psalm 34, beginning at the 12th verse. What man is there who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Turn away from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous, and his ears toward their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to cut off the memory of them from the earth. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. He keeps all his bones. Not one of them is broken. Affliction will slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. The second reading is from Ephesians in the fifth chapter, beginning at the sixth verse. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not become partners with them, for at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. And try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of the things that they do in secret. But when anything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible, for anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. 
Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart, giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. Here ends the readings. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter, beginning at the 51st verse. Jesus said to the Jews grumbling about him, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. As the Father has sent me and I live because of the Father, so whoever feeds on me, he also will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like the bread the fathers ate and died. Whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. Jesus said these things in the synagogue as he taught at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This is a hard saying. Who can listen to it? But Jesus, knowing in himself that his disciples were grumbling about this, said to them, do you take offense at this? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh is no help at all. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who those were who did not believe, and who it was who would betray him. And he said, This is why I told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. After this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer walked with him. So Jesus said to the twelve, do you want to go away as well? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life, and we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. O oh Christ. I invite the young and young at heart to be present uh, we, for our visit from Luther Bear. Oh, you're singing a song, Luther Bear. Let's see. Love, love me do. 
You know I love you. I'll always be true. So please love me do. Wow, you know the Beatles, Luther Bear. Yeah, so that song's a little bit older, but a lot of people may still know that. That's a pretty catchy tune about love. You know what? When I hear that song, Luther Bear, I think about God's love for us and that he will always be true to us, even when we aren't true to him sometimes. It's kind of a catchy tune. I needed to practice singing it more. You sounded better in my ear. But you know what that reminds me of? Reminds me of your namesake, Martin Luther. Yeah, he wrote hymns. But you know what? He often took the tunes. They were catchy tunes of his time that people were singing in places other than church. But he wanted them to be singing about God to those wonderful tunes. And, you know, one of them is a hymn we still sing today. A mighty fortress is our God. And I just think it's fantastic that you were singing today because all of this reminds me of what we hear in Ephesians. The Apostle Paul invites us to be filled with the Spirit addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with our hearts and giving thanks always to God. And you know what? We can do that too with some of the secular music, put some of our own words to it in praise of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And when we hear about love, to think about our call from God to love him and to love our neighbor. Hey, thank you for sharing that tune and message with us today, Luther Bear. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. But why? But why? How many of us as parents or caregivers have given instruction or tried to explain something only to be asked a very long series of questions that sound like, but why, why? And I confess there are times when I've simply finally get to the point of saying, because I told you so, or I'm in charge, or that's the end of this <laughs> for right now. <laughs> um, so I'm going to check how many of you were paying attention um, to the listing of our Old Testament verses today, because we are in chapter 24, and we're starting with the first verse, and we hear that Joshua has called together all the tribes of Israel at Shechem, and he's called the elders, the chief, the judges, and the officers. He's presenting them before God and addressed the people. All right. That takes us through part of verse two. And uh, then we skip to verse 14, where we hear, um, now, therefore, Joshua was addressed to the people. Fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and faithfulness. We this morning may ask, but why? What did we miss in verses, the end of verse 2 through 13? Well, guess what? I have all of scripture with me today. So I am going to read what the lectionary cut out. And uh, uh, I do think it's helpful sometimes to hear a different uh, voice and translation. And so I am going to read these words um, from the message by Eugene Peterson. Okay, I'm going to take a 
quick little infomercial here. Uh, we have translations of the Bible that are literally going from the Hebrew and the Greek, attempting word by word and, and phrase, and in some cases, trying to keep the poetry. And then there are also paraphrase versions um, to help us hear it in a bit more modern language. There's also another important piece about these missing verses from the reading. It's Joshua speaking on behalf of the Lord. And here we go. This is what God, the God of Israel, says. A long time ago, your ancestors, Terah and his sons, Abraham and Nahor, lived to the east of the river Euphrates. They worshipped other gods. I took your ancestor Abraham from the far side of the river. I led him all over the land of Canaan and multiplied his descendants. I gave him Isaac, Jacob, and Esau. I let Esau have the mountains of Seir as home, but Jacob and his sons ended up in Egypt. I sent Moses and Aaron. I hit Egypt hard with plagues, and then I led you out of there. I brought your ancestors out of Egypt. You came to the sea, the Egyptians in hot pursuit with chariots and cavalry to the very edge of the Red Sea. Then they cried out, for help to God, and he put a cloud between you and the Egyptians, and then let the sea loose on them, and it drowned them. You watched the whole thing with your own eyes, what I did to Egypt, and then you lived in the wilderness for a long time. I brought you to the country of the Amorites, who lived east of the Jordan. They fought you, but I fought for you, and you took their land. I destroyed them for you. Then Balak, son of Zippor, made his appearance. He was the king of Moab. He got ready to fight Israel by sending Balaam, son of Beor, to come and curse you. But I wouldn't listen to Balaam. He ended up blessing you over and over. I saved you from him. Then you crossed the Jordan and came to Jericho. The Jericho leaders ganged up on you as well as the Amorites, Pezzarites, Canaanites, Hittites, Girgashites, Hivites, and Jebusites. But I turned them over to you. I sent the hornet ahead of you. It drove out the two Amorite kings, did your work for you. You didn't have to do a thing, not so much as raise a finger. I handed you a land for which you did not work, towns you did not build. And here you are now, living in them and eating from vineyards and olive groves you did not plant. The mighty acts of God on behalf of his people that have brought them to this place where Joshua has gathered them and is now addressing them. What we also know over that time is as God continued to be faithful and deliver his people each step of the way, time and time again, they forgot and turned away from God to worthless idols. But God always came to deliver them, faithful to the covenant, even when his people were not. And so we arrive to verse 14, continuing in the message. So now, fear God, worship him in total commitment, 
Get rid of the gods your ancestors worshipped on the far side of the river and in Egypt. You worship God. If you decide that's a bad thing to worship God, then choose a God you'd rather serve. Do it today. Choose one of the gods your ancestors worshipped from the country beyond the river or one of the gods of the Amorites on whose land you are now living. Um, I thought it was very interesting. Uh, a scholar I read commenting on this said, yep, yeah, go ahead. If you don't want to worship God, choose between garbage and dung. And that's about what you're going to get with those other gods. Uh, and so we hear then the declarative statement from Joshua. As for me and my family, will worship God. And then the people answer, we'd never forsake God, never. We'd never leave God to worship gods. God is our God. He brought up our ancestors from Egypt and from slave conditions. He did all those great signs while we watched. He has kept his eye on us all along the roads we've traveled among the nations we've passed through. Just for us, he drove out all the Amorites and all who lived in the land. Count us in. We too are going to worship God. He's our God. But we know that they did not keep that promise. That God indeed needed to send a savior for his people. And we know him as our Lord Jesus Christ. And we hear that many turned from this true God, the word made flesh among us, as we hear in the gospel lesson. Jesus sensed that his disciples were having a hard time with the teaching that we feed on Jesus' body and blood. And so we hear that it was with this resistance that many left and they no longer wanted to be associated with him. Like Joshua to the tribes of Israel, we hear Jesus say to the 12, which way are you going to go? Jesus gave the 12 their chance. Do you also want to leave? Peter replied, Master, to whom would we go? You have the words of real eternal life. We've already committed ourselves, confident that you are the Holy One of God. And we too have made promises. For some of us, our families made the promises first when we were baptized, promising to raise us in the faith, to bring us to God's house, to feed us on God's word. And then when we were older, some of us at confirmation or affirmation of baptism, or when we joined the church, made the following promises, and this is from our service when we do confirmation the pastor will say you have made public profession of your faith do you intend to continue in the covenant god made with you in holy baptism to live among god's faithful people to hear his word and share in his supper to proclaim the good news of Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following in the example of our Lord Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. And in the service, the people professing and promising reply, I do. And I ask 
God to help and guide me. Those are some pretty big promises. So it's very, very good that we pray for God's help and guidance in our lives, our ongoing lives of Christian discipleship. And thanks be to God that God continues to sustain us on the journey, feeding us with his word and his very body and blood when we come to the table. We hear Jesus say, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. Christ abiding with us. Over and over again, um, one of the verses uh, that speaks to me is Paul's powerful reminder amidst all the challenges, changes, and storms of this life in this day and time. There is nothing that can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Christ with us now and always even when we doubt when we struggle when we turn away to idols and things that do not truly give life and nourish just as our forefathers and mothers of faith have done at times in the past even when we are unfaithful god is faithful christ with us christ feeding us Christ bringing us not only his peace, but confidence, life, and joy, joy, moments of joy in the midst of our discipleship journeys, which can be long and can be struggling, but we're never alone with our sisters and brothers of faith and Christ with us now and always. And may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen.